Welcome back. This morning, durable goods were reported uh, to have risen, uh, but quite a bit, especially taking into consideration transportation. Here we see durable goods is above 5%, which is a big level. Uh, we took a break for a while, but it looks like the durable good orders are back. However, when we take a look at the details, it's led by a very uh, narrow sliver. Uh, with Durable Goods, also known as the M3 survey, it's a factory order survey. Uh, it measures the manufacturing shipments, inventories, and orders, uh, and it provides a broad-based monthly uh, data set on our current economic uh, situation, especially in the manufacturing sector. We can see here on the left-hand side, 4.7% is a month-over-month -month increase in Durable Goods, 7.8% year-over-year. However, if you take out transportation month over month, only up 0.5%, only up 1.7 year over year. So it shows us the brunt of the durable goods, the vast majority of the increase is due to many, uh, transportation. Uh, one large, I believe it's Boeing order. Uh, you take that out, it's actually not so good. Durable goods excluding the fence up 58 Month over month, 7.7 .7 year over year. So you see uh, the uh, defense sector is actually very, very little. It, it's not really contributing very much at all to durable goods. It's all transportation. Here's durable goods month over month. We're at the highest levels we've seen going back to uh, late 2022. There's overall a general positive correlation with the S&P 500 uh, shown here in blue. This should bode well for stocks, but then again, if durable goods is led almost entirely by transportation, maybe this only reflects strength in the transportation stocks. Here's durable goods excluding transportation on a month-over-month -month basis, barely positive, uh, and it really hasn't marked any significant progress going back to uh, early 2022. Durable goods excluding defense, it's up on a month-over-month -month basis, around 6%. That's pretty much in line to the better numbers that we've seen lately. Again, nothing really to write home about. Not a lot of defense contracts out there, at least reflected in durable goods. Here's the overall durable goods on a year-over-year -year basis, up almost 8%. Uh, that's the best number we've seen going back to June. And if we can you know, top that June number, that will be the best number we've seen going back to September of last year. So it does show some progress. However, understand that this is, again, led mostly by transportation. Excluding transportation, it is improving, but it's improving at a very slow rate. And the reason why all of this is important, durable goods is a very important uh, number that the Federal Reserve watches in determining future interest rates. We've looked recently at the Empire State Manufacturing Index in New York, the Philly Fed in Pennsylvania. And those numbers have not been good. So it really does correspond with the weak durable goods, excluding transportation. Here's durable goods, excluding defense. Looks very similar to the overall durable goods number. The best number we've seen since June. Second best number we've seen going back to September of last year. Defense really is playing a very minimal part uh, lately. Here's transportation only in blue, defense only in red. And we can see that the highlight, again, is the transportation sector. It's the best number we've seen since June, and it certainly is trending high, higher. However, the question remains, can we depend on this moving forward? We'd like to see the manufacturing uh, sector improve overall, not only in transportation. There's a lot of manufacturers out there that produce other things other than aircrafts, for example. Uh, so we want to see that, you know, that, that take place. And again, the red histogram bars here show us those times when the durable goods uh, exceeds 5% on a year-over-year -year basis. We're back in that territory now. We weren't in that territory since about June of this year and before that, going back to late 22. So again, it does mark some progress. But in the future reports and the future manufacturing reports, like again, Empire state and Philly Fed, we'd like to see those numbers improve. Without manufacturing, that really is the lifeblood of the economy. And without manufacturing, uh, you know, I don't know that the Federal Reserve has much reason to raise interest rates unless inflation 
is just really, really strong. We have a lot of other numbers to talk about towards the end of this week as well. So stay tuned and we'll be sure to update you with any significant changes along the way. We hope this has been helpful. We look forward to seeing you back soon.